Stephen Yap, I'm the research director at the CCMA. I've really looked at well-being on the front line. I've looked at the things that underpin well-being. I've looked at the things that promote well-being, but also can can undermine well-being. I've talked about, and we we found things like the importance of taking breaks, which seems like such a self-evident and obvious thing. But actually, what the research quantitatively proves is that taking breaks is the difference, the biggest difference of anything when it comes to looking at those who experience symptoms of stress or burnout uh, in the job versus those who don't. It's take, being the ability to take breaks, but then it's harder than ever before to be able to take breaks. And there's a lot of reasons for that because demand is higher. Occupancies are getting higher. Average handle times are higher. Fundamentally, the conversations coming into the contact center are becoming a lot more complex, um, are taking longer to resolve. The simple stuff is increasingly being automated. So fundamentally, the demand that's going into the contact center is changing. We talked about some of the ways in which technology is starting to help in terms of providing decision support systems to advisors on the front line, helping them to serve customers better, to understand what customers want and expect better. We talked about tools that are starting to come out that will help with workforce planning, that will help team leaders, particularly team leaders who, of course, today are increasingly managing remotely, managing a hybrid workforce. And it's so much harder to spot those emerging signs of stress if you're not physically together with somebody if somebody is only uh, across the screen from you how can you tell if they're doing well or if they're not doing well and there are emerging tools that are starting to be deployed that are helping to automatically detect those symptoms or those early signs and to recommend those interventions even if it's something as simple as to an advisor you should be taking a break now now go into rap you know you, you you should take five minutes rap right now or whether it's flagging to a manager that actually somebody uh, may be in need of some uh, some downtime empowerment works at every level and the importance of empowerment cannot be overstated whether it's at the organizational level and we have seen greater empowerment of the contact center, particularly in recent years. The contact center has been elevated. And I think the pandemic, for everything that happened during the pandemic, this is one of the more positive side effects. I think there is a greater recognition in organizations of what contact centers do and the value that contact centers bring to brands and organizations. So that is one level of empowerment. Going straight to, you know, all the way to the front line and the people on the front line, Empowerment is one of the building blocks of well-being. If you want to feel well, if you want to be productive, if you want to minimize your absences or um, instances of people working when they are not fit to work, then empowerment is a big, big part of it. And the contact center has always been a, a, a place, a career where there's a, a great deal of always on and there's a great deal which you cannot control. And that will continue to be the case, but more and more we are finding ways to give back some control to the people on the front line. And tools, technologies definitely have a role to play in creating that added sense of control, that sense of empowerment that I can actually influence outcomes, I can make decisions, I have a role to play. I'm not just implementing a script that someone else has written and I have no say over the outcome at all. The more that you can help people to feel like they have the ability to use their decision-making capabilities, the more you can empower them to feel in control over their career, their job, their outcomes, then ultimately the more well they will be.